Hello. This is kind of a co-tailing on um, the plasma oscillations <clears throat> article. I just wanted to read more about this uh, physicist. So let's get right in. Irving Lang Langmuir. Lang Langmuir. Yep. Irving Langmuir. Uh, born January 31st, uh, 1881. To August 16th, wasn't born in this time range. It was alive from uh, then until August 16th, 1957. Uh, late 1800s to mid um, 1900s. Okay, that's a good good time for science. Uh, he was an American chemist, physicist, and engineer. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1932 for his work in surface chemistry, which I know nothing about. A study of physical and chemical phenomena that occur at the interface of two phases, including solid-liquid interface, solid gas, solid vacuum, liquid gas. Okay, cool. We'll maybe read that article later. Langmuir's most famous publication is the 1919 article The Arrangement of Electrons in Atoms and Molecules, in which, building on Gilbert N. Lewis's cubicle atom theory and Walter Kossel's, Kossel, Kossel's chemical bonding theory, he outlined his concentric theory of atomic structure. Langmuir became embroiled in a priority dispute with Lewis, other, sorry, with Lewis over this work. Langmuir's presentation skills were largely responsible for the popularization of the theory, although the credit for the theory itself belongs mostly to Lewis. While at General Electric from 1909 to 1950, Langmuir advanced several fields of physics and chemistry, Inventing, ooh, inventing the gas-filled incandescent lamp and the hydrogen welding technique. Fascinating. The Langmuir Laboratory for Atmospheric Research near Socorro, New Mexico, was named in his honor, as was the American Chemical Society Journal for the Surface Science called Langmuir. Biography. Early years. Irving Langmuir was born in Brooklyn, New York on, as we said, January 31st. 1881. He was the third of four children of Charles Langmuir and Sadie Nay Cummings. During his childhood, is it Nay or Nee? It's Nay, it's Nay. Uh, during his childhood, Langmuir's parents were, sorry, Langmuir's parents encouraged him to carefully observe nature and to keep a detailed record of his various observations. Weird parents, okay. When Irving was 11, it was discovered that he had poor eyesight. When this problem was corrected, details that had previously eluded him were revealed, and his interest in the complications of nature was heightened. During his childhood, Langmuir was influenced by his older brother, Arthur Langmuir. Arthur was a research chemist who encouraged Irving to be curious about nature and how things work. Arthur helped Irving set up his first chemistry lab in the corner of his bedroom, and he was content to answer the myriad questions that Irving would pose. Langmuir's hobbies included mountaineering, skiing, piloting his own plane, and classical music. Hopefully Mahler. Otherwise, he's a chump. Um, in addition to his... <laughs> sorry. Uh, that or Berlioz. I don't know. In addition to his professional interest in the politics of atomic energy, he was concerned about wilderness conservation. Education. Langmuir attended several schools and institutes in America and Paris between 1892 and 95, before graduating high school from Chestnut Hill Academy in 1898, an elite private school located, located in the affluent Chestnut Hill area in Philadelphia. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Metallurgical Engineering from the Columbia University School of Mines in 1903. He earned his Ph.D. in 1906 under Frederick uh, Dolezalic. Do Dolezalic, sorry for mispronouncing, mispronouncing your name, Frederick. Uh, in Gudengen, Gudengen? I don't know. Uh, for research done doing the Nernst Glower, an electric lamp invented by Nernst. Do we have a picture? Okay, early form of the incandescent lamp. We'll read about that later. His doctoral thesis was entitled on the partial recombination of dissolved gases during cooling. He later did postgrad work in chemistry. Langmuir then taught at Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey, until 1909, when he began working at the General Electric Research Laboratory 
in Synecdoche, Synecdoche? I thought it was Synecdoche, uh, whatever, uh, Synecdoche, New York. Research. His initial contributions to science came from his study of light bulbs, a continuation of his PhD work. His first major development was the improvement of the diffusion pump, which ultimately led to the invention of the high vacuum rectifier and amplifier tubes. A year later, he and colleague Louis Tonks discovered that the lifetime of a tungsten filament could be greatly lengthened by filling the bulb with an inert gas, such as argon, the critical factor overlooked by other researchers, needed uh, being being the need for extreme cl- uh, cl- cleanliness. Sorry, cleanliness in all stages of the process. He also discovered that twisting the filament into a tight coil improved its efficiency. These were important developments in the history of the incandescent light bulb. His work in surface chemistry began at this point when he discovered that molecular hydrogen introduced into a tungsten filament bulb disassociated into atomic hydrogen and formed a layer one atom thick on the surface of the bulb. Wow, that's small. His assistant in vacuum tube research was his cousin, William Cummings White maternal cousin, it would seem. Um, As he continued to study filaments in vacuum in different gas environments, he began to study the emission of charged particles from hot filaments, thermionic emission. He was one of the first scientists, scientists to work with plasmas, and he was the first to call these ionized gases by that name because they reminded him of blood plasma. Langmuir and Tonks discovered electron density waves in plasmas that are now known as Langmuir waves.